Good morning, fourth grade. Welcome to Eureka Math. What does Eureka mean in the English language? It's a Latin phrase that gold miners used, I hear tell. It's also the state uh, motto for California, the best state in the land. Probably know by now, in English it means I have found it. And what have we found? We found the greatest way to learn math. And that, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Damas y caballeros is more valuable than gold itself. We're going to start off with perimeter. Oh no, we're going to start off with our objection. To know and relate metric units to place value units in order to express measurements in different units. Do your best. So our fluency practice, we don't got a lot of room to do that. Mr. Lake kind of messed up on the packet. Let's just see what we can do though, make it work. Um, we're going to write five units. Oh, I should be doing this on grid paper, but I think we can do it on our own. We'll just have to use our imagination. So we're going to have five units. And whoop, pretend that this is five. I'll make kind of a graph paper place looking type thing here. Go ahead and make a square with me. We'll go one, two, three, four, and five, and then we'll go crossways, one, two, three, four, and five. So we see that it's five units this way, and five units this way. So we're gonna try to find out the how many square units there are, okay? So we would go, five, uh, excuse me, we would just go one, two, three, four, five, times one, two, three, four, five, five times five, is 25 square units. And then we can look uh, at the perimeter. That's not what's inside, because believe it or not, you count up, there's 25 squares in there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, are 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. So it's 25 square units. But then perimeter, we count around the perimeter, the edges of this shape. So it'd be 5, 10, 15, 20. That's the perimeter. This is the area. I'm sorry, I forgot to put A equals. So the perimeter equals 5, 10, 15, 20. It's all the sides. So perimeter would equal 20 units. They're not square units. There's 5, 10, 15, 20. Suppose we had another shape and write this down. And let's say this side was five units, but we don't know what this side is. However, we do know the area is 15 square units. So what would this be? If it's 15 square units, five times a number would get me that uh, uh, 15 square units. So what is five times what is 15? Well, let's go 5, 10, 15. Well, it's got to be 3 units on this side. Now we can do the area. 5 plus 3 is 8, plus another 5 is 13, plus another 3 is 16. So the perimeter would equal 16 units. Okay, we'll be doing more of that later on in the year of the perimeter and area. We're going to shoot right down to our application problem. And let's figure out what's going on here. Uh, we're going to underline what we know, annotate, and squiggly line what we need to find out. So, Adam poured 1 liter 460 milliliters of water into a beaker. Over three days, I'm going to circle the three just in case I need it, some of the water evaporated. On the fourth day, I'll circle fourth, 979 milliliters of water remained in the beaker. That's what remained. How much water evaporated? So remember my beaker yesterday? So it started out 1 liter, 460 milliliters, and wound up at 979. So we need to find out uh, how much evaporated. We don't really need the third or the fourth days. So let's get right to it with the fabulous tape diagram. And we'll make our tape diagram right here. If you're confident, you may go right ahead and to solve this. So what is our hole? The hole is what? Usually the big number up here, right? That's what we started with. That's what was in the beaker. So we're going to put 
one, remember the big L for liter, and 460, small m, lowercase m, capital L. We do know that 979 milliliters evaporate it. That's nearly a liter, right? Nearly a thousand. So we'll write 979 milliliters. And then we look over here, and this is what evaporated. We don't know what that is. Just E, evaporation, we'll call that. So let's try to figure this out a couple of different ways. Are you with me? We could use a standard algorithm. Just convert both of these, convert that to milliliters. How many milliliters would it be? We know that's 1,000 and 460, so we'll just put 1,460. we got to put the unit there so we remember, right? And we're going to subtract 979 milliliters. Okay. So, we're subtracting. There's our problem right there. Mr. Lake is going to just double check the camera, make sure we're all in focus and in line. Yep, everything's looking good. So let's get busy subtracting. I know I can't take nine ones away from zero ones, so I'm going to decompose the tens. This will become a five, and this will become a ten, right? Ten minus nine is one. Before I forget, I'm going to put my milliliters there. Then we have uh, 70 milliliters. Can't uh, subtract 70 from 50. So we're going to decompose from the hundreds. This will become a 3, and that will become a 15. 15 minus 7. If you can't do that in your head, just count up. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 5 plus 3 is 8. I can't take 9 hundredths away from 3 hundredths, so I'm going to decompose the thousands. Make that 13 hundredths. 13 hundredths minus 9 hundredths. Can't figure that out in your head. Just go 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 4. So it looks like E, and we'll come down here to do this, E equals 481 milliliters. And we could just say 481 milliliters uh, evaporated. Period. Okay. Uh, we could also do the other solution. Um, let's just do a real quick job of this, okay? Um, excuse me. We can go like this. We can say 1,460 milliliters minus 979 milliliters. And what we could do is break this down to um, 1,000 milliliters and 460 milliliters, so we have that. And let's just cross out this right here, because let's say we did 1,000 minus 979, think about it, 80 would be one, and then 90 would be 11, and another 10 would be 100, or 1,000, excuse me, so this would be 21. Understand how that works? 21 milliliters. Then all we have to do is add these two together. 460, 480, uh, 460, 470, 480, 481. That's if you really got this whole business down. If you don't, that's okay. So let's continue on with our concept development. And the first thing we're going to make is a... Um, a place value chart. I know we love those. Let's just go ahead and do it kind of to this side. We'll do one column, two column, three column, four columns. Okay, we have four columns. And I'm going to put a line right across there so it looks like this. And let's label those columns. We're going to start off with one gram. Okay. Then we'll go to ten grams. 100 grams, and then one kilogram, or how many grams would that be? How many paper clips? 1,000 grams. So make your number line look like this. Okay. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to put um, a dot here on one gram. And let's make a note over here. We'll say one kilogram equals one thousand times one grams. See that? What would that be? One thousand times one is one thousand, so that'd be just one thousand grams. So one kilogram equals one thousand grams. The way we could show this on our place value chart is really nifty. Hmm. One right there. What do we multiply by? We multiplied it by 1,000, right? One. So one gram times 1,000 equals one kilogram. The same could be said for our liters, right? One liter equals 1,000 times one milliliters, right? And we can also do it for kilometers, for distance. I could say one kilometer equals <laughs> excuse me <sighs> equals one thousand times one meter. And we could just if we really want to show this all this together, we say one thousand. That's 1,000 equals 1,000 times 1, 1. So we had 1 gram, we multiply by 1,000, we get 1,000 grams, and that gives us 1 kilogram. Same thing over here. 1 liter equals 1,000 times 1 milliliters. 1 kilometer equals 1,000 times 1 meters. And 1,000 equals 1,000 times 1, 1. Okay, we're going to do another one before we... Um, Turn the page. In this one we only need three. Excuse me. Nose itches. Okay, so we're gonna do this. And we're gonna call this one meter, ten meters, and last but not least, one excuse me, Mr. Leggett, cross that out. One centimeter. 10 centimeters and then one meter or 100 centimeters. So that's what it looks like. Now we do use centimeters and meters a lot and it's not about 1,000. In this case it's about 100. So if I had one centimeter and I wanted to get to one meter, I would multiply it by 100 and I would get one meter. So we could say in this case one meter equals 100 times one centimeters. Okay? Excuse me. And we'll turn the page. So let's say, um, we all know this by now, I think. One meter equals 100 centimeters, right? We know that. One meter is equal to 100 centimeters. What unit is 100 ones? Well, 100 equals 100 ones, right? 100 is just a, make, made up of 100 ones. I notice that one kilogram is 1,000 grams, and one liter is 1,000 milliliters. So do you discover two place value units with a similar um, relationship? Yes, we do. 1,000 equals 1,000 ones. So we can rename 1,200 milliliters as 1 liter 200 milliliters. How could you break 1,200 into place value units? Well, let's do it. Let's do it right now. We're going to do four sections. Leave room on the bottom of the paper. One two, three, that's four sections, right? And we're gonna start off with one milliliter, then we'll go to 10 milliliter, then 100 milliliter, and finally one liter or 1,000 milliliters.
Got that? So we started with one milliliter, 10 milliliter, 100 milliliter, and one liter, which equals 1,000 milliliters. That's an ml at the end there. So let's say we were talking about 1,200 um, milliliters, and we're going to try to rename this into liters. So we had 1,200, right? That would give us one, two, I'll put my comma there, zero, zero. How could we rename this in kilometers, I mean, excuse me, in liters and milliliters? I could say one liter, right? 200 milliliters. And let's do one more of these. And I'm gonna scroll down. This time around, we're gonna need five columns, okay? So let's go, um, excuse me, one, two, three, four, and five. And um, well, this time around, let's work with grams. Okay, one gram, 10 grams, 100 grams, 1,000 grams, which also equals one kg, one kilogram. And we'll go over here and put 10,000 grams, all right? So let's do this number of grams. Let's do 15,450. 15,450 grams. And we're gonna to try to break it into kilograms and grams, all right? That's our number right here. So I have one ten thousand. I have five one thousand uh, place value. I have four hundreds. I have five tens and zero grams. So we could say one, five, four, five, zero. I'll put my comma there. So how can we break this into kilograms and grams? Well, we know that anything a thousand one over is kilograms. So I could put fifteen kilograms, 450 grams. I hope that's starting to click and make some sense. And we'll do one more. It's also, we can also call that 15,451s, right, if we wanted to. And let's just take a look at centimeters, okay? So for this one, we're only gonna need one, three columns. And we have one cm. 10 cm and one meter or 100 centimeters. So let's say we have 895, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, five. So I have eight, nine, five. How can I break this up into meters and centimeters? Easily, it's 895 centimeters right now, but I can also do eight meters, 95 centimeters. Ta-da! All right, we're moving right along, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, damas y caballeros. Let's do another problem. And this is gonna show you kind of 10 times as many, all right? So let's do it horizontal. Well, no, I don't think we do it, won't fit in. We're gonna have to do six columns. All right, six columns. And we're gonna do milliliters and liters. We'll start off with one ml, 10 ml, 100 ml, one, 1,000 ml, and this is also known as one liter. 10,000 ml, how many liters would that be? Be 10 liters. And 100,000 ml, how many would 100,000 milliliters be? It would be 100 liters. Okay, so we're all set. So let's say we had this equation to deal with. 700, and go ahead and write this down, 24,706 milliliters greater than or equal to 72 liters 760 ml. So go ahead and write that down before we start. Excuse me, I 
alarm went off, that means my math lesson's running out of time. So, let's see what we have. We have 72 liters, right? So I would do 70, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 2, 7, then 6, and 0. So we can see that this is 72 liters, 760 milliliters. But what about the next one? We don't even need to do the dots, okay? Let's just take a look. 724,000. So that would be 724,000. 706. So we could see that this number is definitely greater. And we could break this up into liters and milliliters, can we? 72 liters, just like it's set up there. 724 liters, 706 milliliters, and 760 milliliters. So we can totally see that that is greater. 724 liters, definitely bigger than 72. Um, we'll continue on next page. I hope I have another page left. We're gonna do a number line. Yahoo! So, make your number line. All right. We're gonna put four ticks. One, two, three, and four, okay? First tick. We're gonna label 7,230 meters, 7,240 meters, 7,250 meters, 7,260 meters. So we have 7,230 meters, 7,240 meters, 7,250 meters and 7,260 meters. So it looks like they're going up by 10 meters each time, each tick. 10, 10, 10. 30, 40, 50, 60. All right, let's see what this looks like in kilometers, in mixed units, okay? We're ready to give that a try. We know that 1,000 meters equals seven kilometers, so down below we would put seven km, how many meters are left? 230 meters. Down here, we know it's 7,000, right? So that's 7 km, 240 meters. Over here, 7 km, 250 meters. And you could probably get this one on your own, I'm sure. So let's do 7,200, oops, seven kilometers. 260 meters. You see how that works? Alrighty, I think that will be the end of our um, math today. Please log on to Zern. Please keep doing a terrific job for Mr. Cornejo. Earn those 15 minutes of extra recess.